Hey, what's up guys and gals? My name is Rick9G. I want to welcome all three Stooges fans out there. Hopefully you're doing okay. Today we're going to be looking at the short called A Pain in the Pullman. This episode was recorded between April 29th and May 4th, 1936. Now, what does the episode mean when it says A Pain in the Pullman? Well, Pullman is the name for a railroad sleeping car. And James C. Morton plays a character named Paul Payne. And he is an actor who is on this train with the Stooges. The Stooges cause chaos for him. And so the name, the pain in the Pullman, comes to fruition. Every Stooge short is between 15 and 20 minutes long. However, a pain in the Pullman is the longest of any three Stooges short. It is 19 minutes and 46 seconds. Compare that to the shortest, Sappy Bullfighters, which ran at 15 minutes, 12 seconds. Kind of an interesting fact. This short is also the first time where Mo, Larry, and Curlier actually referred to the Three Stooges in the dialogue. I want to talk to the Three Stooges. Telephone for the Three Stooges! Oh, hi. We are the Three Stooges and Company. Now going back to the scene where the Stooges are hauling the trunk down the street, you notice the left side, you see the building there and those steps and the brick building. 1420 North Beachwood Drive that faces toward the gates outside the dark area of Stage 7 at Columbia Pictures Studio. If you go back to the Stooge short, Three Little Beers, you can see the same building where they're pouring out and trying to smooth out the cement. It's the same building, different angle. Pretty cool to see them in both shorts. Now in this scene with Joe the monkey and Paul Payne the actor, if you look closely, you can see a string or wire used around the monkey so that he won't get away, probably for his trainer, but it's interesting to see it here in the scene. Once on the train, one of my favorite scenes is when the Stooges go inside the special suite of Mr. Payne, the actor, and they begin to eat his food. Of course, they can't figure out what's in front of them, and they try to guess. Oh, just in time for lunch. What is that? It's a spider. Title! Oh! Come in! You want some? Oh, I just love crab. She don't know what's a title. <laughs> Later in an interview, Mo Howard admitted something. Quote, he says, I have to tell you, if there's one thing to which I have an aversion, it's shellfish. And I couldn't bring myself, even for the film, to put that claw in my mouth. Preston Buck, the director, asked me to just lick the claw, but I couldn't. He finally had the prop man duplicate the claw out of sugar and food coloring and had me nibble on it as though I was enjoying it. I was still very weary during the scene. I was afraid that they had coated the real shell with sugar and that the awful claw was underneath. I chewed that claw during the scene, but if you notice, I did it very gingerly. Yeah, I like these little points. <clears throat> Also, according to Mo Howard, Curly was still chewing on the shell, which was cutting the inside of his mouth. Apparently, he didn't say anything during shooting, but after the fact, they noticed that he was bleeding a bit from his mouth. Really crazy. Now, after the scene, Mr. Payne comes into the room and screams out the Stooges to get out. Surprisingly, the girl that was once next to them eating the crab disappears. There's no trace of her after this scene. What's the meaning of this? Well, let's take a road try to crash our party. In the star's drawing room. What do you mean by invading the star's drawing room? Now, before we finish from the scene, I want to point to the girl on the right, the actress. Notice what her reaction is when she sees Curly eat the shell. She kind of laughs and giggles and looks down so that the camera doesn't catch her. But we can still tell that she's laughing. It's really hard to hold it in, that laughter with Curly right next to you. <laughs> There are at least 10 moments where the dialogue is redubbed, so I won't go through all of them. I'll just let you know that there's a lot of them in this episode. I'll just point out the struggling of the three Stooges trying to get on the top berth and the use of mannequins and stunt doubles to get them up there. It was really entertaining to watch. As this rather tall woman grabs Curly and launches him up to the top berth, notice the weightlessness that is given to his body because, of course, they use a mannequin double. Hmm? Wake up and go to sleep. Huh? Huh? 
The closing shot of the Stooges leaping over a bush and landing onto a trio of bucking steers was reused at the end of another short, A Ducking They Did Go. <laughs> to both viewers who have been with me for such a long time and new viewers, I give a big and great thanks to you for watching my content. I do appreciate it. We'll see you all next time and don't forget to always stay positive, always better yourself, and most importantly, be hopeful.